Hi, my name is Tom Coleman, and I'm a co-founder of Chromatic and a core maintainer of Storybook. Uh, in my Storybook development, I focus mainly on the rendering stack of Storybook, so the part of Storybook that renders your stories and, crucially, also renders your docs. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. Uh, today, I want to talk about a revamp of Storybook docs that we've done as part of Storybook 7. You know, we released Storybook docs a couple of major versions ago, and we've taken a lot of feedback over the years about how it works. And we wanted to take the opportunity to rethink a few things and really tighten things up and make it better for everyone. So to start with, let's just talk about what Storybook Docs is. You know, as you're using Storybook, you're writing a bunch of stories, which are component examples that um, ways of showing or of telling the computer how the component is used. And that is a great development tool because it allows you to quickly uh, get your component into a given state and work on it and improve it and uh, make it better. But all those examples that you've built, all those stories that you've built are also great if someone wants to use your component, if you want to share it, if you want to make it reusable. Uh, how do they use your component? Well, you've already got a big list of ways to do that. Um, and so why not make those component examples available and viewable by the consumers of your component? And so Storybook Docs is a feature that, uh, you know, makes it possible to build long form pages that include all your stories inside them. Uh, we, we either automatically do that for you or we offer a bunch of features to allow you to customize it. Uh, and we'll get into that as we talk about what's changed in Storybook 7. So the most obvious change in Storybook 7 is the movement of docs from being sort of a story level feature to being a component level feature. What do I mean by that? Well, if you look on the left hand side, you'll see that the um, docs um, tab is up in the toolbar. It's right next to Canvas. When you've selected a story, you can then switch into docs mode. That kind of gives the idea that docs is a story level feature. It's sort of another view of a story. But what we realize is that you're not documenting your stories. That's not the point. You're documenting your components. So we've moved the docs tab down to be underneath the component in the, in the sidebar and enable uh, you to think of docs as a component level feature. It's I'm documenting this component and the stories are just how I'm doing that. Um, this makes also makes it a lot easier for use, new users to find it when they're viewing your storybook. You know, they had to previously had to know that the docs tab was up there. It's not as in your face. Now, when, as soon as you browse to the component, the first thing you'll see is the docs entry. And it's, it's very clear that it's sort of uh, a top level feature of a component. It also makes it more consistent when doing things like putting in unattached docs like introduction that document the whole storybook or the whole component library rather than a uh, single component and makes it possible to put more than one doc for the same component. Uh, the key, a key feature of Storybook docs is auto docs. So we've talked about that already, automatically using information in your storybook, particularly your stories, but also metadata that we can extract from your uh, set of components uh, from your source code uh, to show information uh, to build a docs page without any intervention by you. Um, one change we wanted to make was to make that a more deliberate choice. So not so previously you had to either have every component documented or none. Now you opt into it. So you choose which components make sense to be ordered, to be docu auto documented. So in this case, you know, the docs, the button component is a reusable component. So it makes sense to tag it with auto docs and to have it show up in the sidebar with a docs entry. The page component isn't really reusable. So we don't really need to document it in that same way. So we don't give it the tag and it doesn't show up with a docs entry in the sidebar. Um, a big focus of the Storybook 7 effort for docs was to make it easier and more intuitive to customize your documentation. So we've seen like the kind of out of the box default, but what happens when you want to tweak it, you want to add more information, you want to make it a little bit nicer. Uh, the first way you can do that is to customize auto docs, and there are a set of parameters that you use to do that. Uh, auto docs is ultimately built from a set of blocks, which we'll discuss in a moment, and those blocks can be controlled either directly, and we'll also get to that in a moment, or sort of indirectly via parameters that you put on the story. So in this case, we're seeing this primary story is showing up in the story list. Uh, it's good, but it, it could be it could be a little bit better. So why don't we? give it a description and we do that via JS doc. Um, we can document both the story and the component using JS doc. And this is great because it means that your code and your documentation stay in sync without any effort from you. Um, but also we might want to make the source code available straight away so we can add the canvas 
source state parameter, and, and that will make that open by default. Um, we might also want to change it to show the raw source code rather than the JSX that we were looking at a moment ago. That's the source type uh, parameter. And so there are a whole set of parameters um, that control these various blocks, and um, we've put a lot of work in to make it a lot more consistent and um, intuitive what those parameters are. So that's auto docs. But the second thing you might want to do is completely control the way the documentation for a given component is written. And the way we ha offer to do that is using MDX. MDX is marked down with components. It's sort of an industry standard format. And Storybook includes a lot of improvement. Seven includes a lot of improvements to the DX of writing MDX in Storybook. Um, so here's an example of a what, what I referred to before as an unattached docs page, a sort of a documentation page for the whole uh, storybook or the whole design system. Use the meta tag with the title to do that. I'll talk about that in a moment. And you can see within here that the MDX shows up inside your storybook straight away, and it's, it's, all, it's all very simple. Um, storybook 7 has a lot of improvements to the MDX. The biggest and most obvious one is the change to MDX2 which is the latest release of MDX. MDX2 is great. It has a lot of good features, uh, a lot of improvements, some of which you can see here. Um, it's also a big change. Uh, we do include some code migrations to help, but um, if you need to, you can opt out of MDX2 and continue to use MDX1 for the uh, 7.x uh, release cycle. Um, a big focus of Docs2 was to make customizing Docs easier and more intuitive, as I've said. And... I'll take you through a few of the doc blocks. These are things that you can use inside your MDX files to get Storybook's function, automatic functionality um, that, that appears in Autodocs. Um, a big focus has been to make it more easier to use and also more consistent. So let's start with the meta, the meta tag, the meta um, block. Um, the meta block controls where your um, doc uh, page appears in the sidebar. So you can see if you use a title, as we saw before, it shows up unattached sort of not attached to any particular component, and you, you don't actually even need to have that if you just like to use auto, um, auto titling to just put it based on the file name. Um, if you want to attach a, a meta file or an, a docs file to a component, use the meta of. And this of syntax you'll see everywhere in the doc blocks. It's our new way of attaching things to other things, uh, doc blocks to components or stories. We use of and, the Im and we import the exports of the story file, the CSF file. Uh, there's a few reasons for that, but the primary one is sort of tooling related. Um, it means that you know your editor can tell you if you've got it wrong, essentially. And so you can see here, if we do meta of button stories, our docs file appears under button. Um, we can also add a name, and this is the way you add a second one um, to, a, a, to create a second docs file for the same component. Another block that's had a lot of changes in 7.0 is a description block. We kind of mentioned it earlier. It uses uh, your JS doc that's embedded in your source code uh, to produce descriptions that you can embed in your MDX file. So here you can see like the pure usage of a single description block um, produces a line of text. Where did that text come from? It came from this JS docs of the component. You can also, uh, of the story, you can also use it for a component and it'll pull the JS doc from the component. Um, the canvas block is a really important one. You, we've seen it a bunch of times already. It's the one that renders a story alongside its source code, a little toolbar potentially. So here you can see a canvas block has been customized in quite a few ways that um, are similar to what we saw earlier. So you can see here, the canvas block has a bunch of props that are very similar to the, not very similar, that match up identically with the parameters that we saw earlier for a story to control the way that the canvas was rendered. The controls block is a really important block. It's another one that appears in the auto doc. This is the um, block that lets you see the args or the inputs to a uh, story or a component. And in particular, it lets you change them. So when you do controls of a story, we're doing here for the primary story, you can see that we've got all the values of the args that that story uses. And if you change them, toggle them, uh, update them, the story, assuming it's also rendered in the MDX file, will update accordingly, which allows for really great interactive experiences in your docs page. Uh, so that's a really brief and quick tour of some of the doc blocks that we've changed in 7.0 or improved. Uh, there are a bunch more. Uh, please check out our docs um, to 
to see the <laughs> our documentation to see the full uh, list of doc blocks that you can use and you can even use uh, a special uh, helper called use of to build your own that same of syntax um, additionally um, you know this is a big change a lot of these blocks have changed um, everything that was working in 6.x is still supported in 7.0 but there are a bunch of deprecated things that you'll hopefully migrate away from uh, either now or um, in the next few releases of Storybook. And to help you do that, we've built some auto migrations, which are really powerful and will save you a lot of time. Um, so here's an example of um, probably the biggest one of them all. So um, one big change that we made um, is we've deprecated the ability to write stories inside MDX files. Um, we got feedback that it was confusing. When should you use CSF? When should you use MDX to define stories? Uh, our new position is always CSF and then import them into MDX, um, which is what we've been seeing in this talk. And so here's an example of a old style stories.mdx file that's written and is defining a story called primary. And so what we can do is we can pass that to the MDX to CSF or migration code mod, and it will automatically change it into an MDX and a CSF file. Button stories.js, the CSF file, which defines the same story, button.mdx, the new documentation file, which shows it. And that will happen for as many MDX stories.mdx files as you have. Um, and should, you know, in the case of storybooks that have done a lot of that, make your life a lot easier and get you up to the latest and greatest weight of your using storybook and storybook docs in 7.0. So thanks a lot for that whirlwind tour of Storybook 7's docs. Um, we hope that you find it like a lot easier to use and more intuitive and that you are able to document even more of your components and share them around and get people reusing them because that's one of the main goals of Storybook is to make it easier to reuse your components and make your UI better. Um, thanks very much. Um, cheers.